Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and uh, start introducing ourselves. Let's go ahead and do that in chat, please. Just tell me who you are and where you're from and your maybe your title too, okay? And if you wear many hats, that's okay too. Go ahead and share your name and where you're from. Uh, good morning, my name is Rich Moran. I'm principal at Aptos Junior High School in Aptos, California. Okay. All right, good, good. Good morning. It's nice to nice to see you. We have uh, Pamela. Thank you. Okay, Fresno County Superintendent of Schools. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have Alyssa. We have Michelle. All right, Lauren, friend, um, Kenzie Holcomb, Chrissy Brady. All right, Joshua Wall. Hello, Sandy. From is that New Hampshire? Okay, we have Denise, Mary Sauter, Aaron. Hello. All right. Sorry, it was it's New Hampshire. My mic was off. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Okay, so um. What we're going to do here is discuss a lot. Okay. Oh, Adam. Um, Adam, I know you, right? I think we've met before. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Good. And it's good to good to see everybody. We are going to discuss a whole bunch of things about uh, things about student directed learning, which is a great place where we are now and where we're doing planning for the fall and um, uh, really helping uh, um, rework lessons and, and planning so that we get a lot of student-directed instruction. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the resources, okay? Here are the resources for the presentation and for the Padlet for us to be able to add stuff to, okay? Everybody should be able to be able to get on the Padlet and just be able to type. Um, and then there's the presentation. I see a couple people already jumped into that. Awesome. Okay, and the uh, uh, Padlet uh, works like this. Okay, so it looks like this. So um, is there anybody, so you can put this in the chat, is there anybody who has not used Padlet before? David, we're not seeing your screen. We're seeing uh, black, just so you know. Really, I had no idea. Okay, so that is really, really strange. Okay, so it should be. I can, I I can see you. I was able to see your screen. Okay, uh, you were able to see my screen. All right, I'm going to share that again because I'll just uh, throw that there to my second desktop again. All right, everybody should see that. Okay. All right. So we have um, Mary said they have not used uh, Padlet before. Okay. All right, so th I want you to think of Padlet as a giant bulletin board where you can post a lot of different things, okay? And it's not just text, okay? It is all sorts of media. We're talking about audio and video, okay? And pictures and things like that. So um, it is a great way, uh, it is a great way to share a lot of resources and have students do, uh, to showcase, showcase their learning, so. Um, you can also do things similar like uh, to uh, in a, a Jamboard, okay, if you have a, a Google Jamboard um, organized like that as well. Um, I'm, uh, I've been using Padlet uh, for, uh, I think, about eight years. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I've, I really like Padlet, and as it's developed, I'm, I, like, I like sticking with it only because uh, it, has, it, keeps, it keeps improving, um, and that's, that's my thing. All right, so um, let's make sure we all have the uh, resources, okay? So we have, uh, again, if you did, I don't think we had anybody jump in um, in the last minute, uh, but here you go. You have the Prezo and the Padlet for everybody to uh, jump in on. Now the Padlet is organized so that as we go through the presentation, you can add in the different columns. So we try to keep it a little bit more organized and uh, then you just would click on the plus sign. If you've never used it before, you click on the plus sign and then you just start uh, you to a title and then you put your, your content in. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started with our presentation today. Okay, um, and let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and move that there. Okay, 
and student directed learning with hyperdocs okay a little bit about myself uh, i'm david platt uh, i am now the tosa and testing coordinator at paramount high school in paramount uh, california so um, if you don't know where paramount is it's right next to compton uh, we have a very large student population in fact the uh, campus is a it's a it's a little weird when you go because it is a 10th through 12th grade campus and then the ninth grade campus is across the street it is a part of a, a, a something that they set up back in the 90s um and they are still continuing with it okay so all in total we have about 4500 to 4600 high school students so we have a very large and um we have a very diverse campus as well um so we have a lot of and we have a lot of uh students from uh different backgrounds and uh socioeconomic uh backgrounds as well so uh if you have any questions email me um, however, the best way to get a hold of me is to uh, DM me in Twitter, and uh, my Twitter is Hair Platt. And my Twitter is Hair Platt because for 17 years I was a German German teacher. So I will say that I am a recovering German teacher, okay? Um, because there's always a part of me that is a German teacher and will be. And um, it, it, yeah, it's just me. I, I would never want to go to at um at david platt um which i don't think i can do because there is a pastor back east with my name okay or i have his name depends on your perspective and uh um is uh, this this makes mine a little bit more unique okay and again our resources okay um now it, 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 did anybody see uh john's presentation today uh this this morning yep all right so a lot of these things that we're doing can fit right under edge protocols, okay, to uh, make really good streamlined uh, learning for our students, okay? So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna put this up here and I'm gonna put this up with, a, with some music background and a timer for five minutes. And um, the question is, what is a HyperDoc? Um, I'd like you to go here and most of the links should work, okay? Um, Depends on your, if you're working through your site and if your site has certain things blocked, um, some of them may not. And all I want you to do is complete the explore task, okay? And then we're gonna come back. So I'm gonna put up a timer for five minutes and some, um, and some background music. If you have questions, please go, uh, yes, I can copy the link into the chat for you. As I go back, make it a little easier. All right, there you go, Michelle. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna put up that timer. We have five minutes and go ahead and answer the question, what is a hyperdoc, okay? And um, after you're done, what you can do is you can go to the Padlet, okay? All right, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a column of what is a hyperdoc, okay? And go ahead and answer that question. Okay, just see what I do with that Padlet there, how cool and quick it is to just organize stuff. All right, and add your post right there, okay? All right, and timer starts now. Okay, love to use Google stuff. Okay, that way I don't have to search too often. Remember to do those posts in, or do those posts in the first column, okay? All right, and you wanna make sure to go to that link and go through the materials and see what we can do for answering what is a hyperdoc. Okay, don't answer in every column yet. Okay, we don't need to do that. All right, just the first column only. Whoever had that post and then uh, took it away and corrected it, awesome job. I think that was Adam, right? Oh, 
David, we have someone in the chat saying that they're having trouble with the links not working. Hmm. All right. I'm going to take a look at some of those. I have my dogs in here with me in the garage, and um, hopefully they don't start barking. When they see, they see somebody walking across the street, they think they own the street. So they sometimes want to bark, and my mic can tune out most of that, but not everything. All right, let's take a look, see what some of these links don't work. Um, is always the best when links don't work and or something doesn't work when you're in a presentation, right? Okay, just like in class, things don't work. All right. Oh, I'm seeing quite a few of them actually come up. It was just a couple so far. Um, I'm seeing what's the hype with HyperDocs did not, uh, did not work. All right. If one link doesn't work, please try to work on the other links. Um, the nice thing uh, or the, the bad thing about these is that some I didn't create this particular material. So I sometimes am at the mercy of someone else's stuff. And then if it go, goes away, um, then I don't uh, I can't have access to it anymore. Um, the stuff created from Carly Mora, though, uh, who is, uh, a lot is created this one, I believe, is uh, all of the links should probably work on for that okay all right we've got a few more minutes on our timer oh we have less than that we have one minute and 20 seconds no you're not filling in the chart michelle okay you don't need to fill in the chart for that you just fill in um, the leftmost column on the Padlet. Okay, you're saying not working for me. What What is not working for you? Can you be a little bit more specific in the chat? All right, three, two, one. Okay, good, good, all right. Um, pretty much you just have to, to go ahead and hit enter when you, when you do that. So, um, let's see, let's see. So if those of you who have not used Padlet before, all right, when you go to the Padlet, you would just hit on the pl uh, plus sign. You'd give yourself a title and, uh, for that. Um, and we can type that in and then you could do your response. Okay. So when you're using something like a Padlet, you can do a response and then you can upload materials. Okay, you can put in a link. You can take a picture from your camera, which is really cool if you have uh, Chromebooks or you have, uh, if you have Padlet, or uh, uh, you have a tablet device, or your all your students have laptops. Okay, or you can insert all of these things too, which is really really cool. Um, yes, Sandy, you should be able to see everyone's responses on the leftmost side. Okay, and then. What is a hyperdoc? You would be able to then put in your response and then be done. So let's see what some people's responses are. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Okay. 
Uh, isn't it a guided Google Doc with links and structure? Okay, in some ways, yes. Okay, you can put everything from one unit in one place, not even just a unit. You can just do one particular lesson. Um, okay, we have a guided learning experience. Okay, and has, yes, does totally scaffolds research, creativity, critical thinking, writing, and student voice. Okay, and uh, student voice is a huge, is a huge part with this. Okay, um, again, we're coming up with that whole point of an interactive document. Okay, and they can explore a lot of different topics and a lot of different resources, a lot of different media. All right, and again, we have the point of structured lessons. Um, a single document, and it doesn't even need to be a single document. So it can be a lot of different, a lot of different things there. Okay, um, to find resources, focus on topic for learning, and structured independent inquiry for the students. Yes. Okay. All right, it's a one-stop shop document for students to work and learn, okay? A place for students to work at their own pace. Yes, okay, that is a huge, it is a huge part of that too, is um, uh, being able to have students work at their own pace. And I had mine in here. I'm just gonna delete it because I don't need to see my own comment. All right, so when we're thinking about a hyperdoc, okay, a hyperdoc is all of these things. The thing that it is not, though, we'll find out, it is not a digital worksheet. Okay, and um, if you've heard John speak about worksheets, you know what his opinion is. All right, and uh, they don't, they aren't called worksheets. All right, so let's talk about who, real quick here, who made uh, HyperDocs? So HyperDocs, um, I mean, we, we can think of what the power of Google Docs is and um, any type of Google document that we can link to outside resources and link to other materials fluidly, um, but the, the term and then really pushing out the resources for HyperDocs were from um, the HyperDocs girls, okay? And if you've uh, never had the opportunity to meet them or follow them on Twitter, follow them on Twitter and you can get a lot of resources from them. So we have Lisa, um, Sarah, and Kelly. But then why? Why would why do we have actually the, the, the need for HyperDocs? Why were HyperDocs actually created? Okay, so the whole point is really shifting the focus, right? So we're shifting the focus from, yeah, teacher doing the all the instruction, okay, and instead we have moving to student-directed learning and the, the teacher working as a mentor, okay? All right, um, and I'm making sure I'm checking chat as we're going through this, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to multitask as best as my brain can right now. All right, so the whole point of a hyperdoc is really to shift the focus from, uh, from us to students, and then we're working as mentors for our students. Okay, so really we have, we have the difference, right? Um, and we still, we still see these in our, in our schools, right? We still have the teacher hiding behind the desk, right? Um, and we're, we are moving to this where the teacher can then move fluidly around the classroom and students are all working uh, sometimes at their own pace, okay, but they're all working um, on their, their particular work, all right, on um, sometimes even their own, uh, their own passion and things that they are interested in, and the teacher then is there as the facilitator and mentor for your students, okay? So let's explain what a hyperdoc actually is, okay? So um, I used some images from uh, Diana Mancuso and Misty uh, Klusner, all right? Um, and if you have not yet sketch noted, it is a great way to do uh, notes. I don't sketch note too much yet because um, I, mine are embarrassing. I think my, I think my sketch notes are pretty embarrassing. Is there anybody here who does, does sketch noting? You can uh, let us know in the chat and you, uh, you feel good about like your sketch notes. We had one person say say that they did. Anybody else? You love sketch noting. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah, mine. Uh, <laughs> I feel I feel my sketch notes are are, are horrible. Um, but that's kind of the thing about sketch notes is that your sketch notes can be anything and everything. Okay, it doesn't have. It can be stick figures, and that's okay. Which a lot of mine are. All right. And if you've ever ever listened to some people talk about uh, sketch notes, um, you. Don't need to make it super super complicated. All right. Okay. So hyperdoc. 
uh, we had this idea that a lot of people were were putting in the Padlet as we had is we had uh, is something that is interactive. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, different resources that are being used. Okay, um, we had someone talk about uh, something to uh, em emphasize a student's voice. All right, so we have a student creativity. All right, it is something that is engaging. It's not just note taking. Okay, it is not just one particular assignment that students are blocked into. All right, so um, uh, students are, can get drawn into it more, especially when they are uh, they can work on something and, and may have a choice. All right, in their learning, so student uh, choice is important in there. All right, personalized. All right, again, the point that you can make it uh, that students can have their voice and their choice in their learning is huge. All right, and transformative. Okay. Because we are moving away from student uh, teacher directed to student directed. Okay, so I probably I put in a different um, a different sketch note here. What you can see that we are moving before and after. Okay, we are going away from the teacher directed, where we have the teacher as the captain and then leading the ship, and everybody's behind the captain. To you have this model where everybody's everybody's working together. Okay. Um, and but then it's also personalized with lots of resources and you're not uh, maybe just blocked into just using a couple resources and then students can even find their own resources as well. Okay, so when we are doing hyperdocs, okay, Aaron, a lot of us are familiar with the uh, Madeline Hunter 7, right? You could totally do a hyperdoc with the Madeline Hunter 7. Totally. All right. When if you're doing if you're doing edge protocols and um, you can totally work with uh, work with the Madeline Hunter Seven. Um, a lot of times, the hyperdocs work with the five E's. Okay. Yes, Mike Rohde has some great examples of sketch noting, and Sylvia Duckworth is the one that um, I, I've always kind of I kind of look at for for some models for sketch noting and and whatnot. And Anne Cosma, I know Anne Cosma who works with Flipgrid now. She she does a lot of things with sketch noting as well, and has some. Great examples of where to start. I'm not the person to ask where to start for sketch noting. I, uh, I, I think mine are embarrassing. <laughs> okay, so when we're doing um, the hyperdocs, we are looking at things with the five E's. Okay, and the nice thing about it as a hyperdoc is you don't have to do all five E's. Okay, and we don't even have to um, start with the uh, with one particular thing in the five E's. Okay, there, it doesn't go in any particular order. And if you've seen anything with them, um, like if you if you are have been using the Madeline Hunter Seven for a long time, where we start with preview and then all the all the way to closure, um, not and you've listened to what John has to say about that is you don't have to go in a particular order even with that. So let me ask this here in chat. Okay, in chat, um, what should you start a lesson with if you're doing the five E's? All right, this is a, this is a trick question. All right, so <laughs> I see someone laughing at me a little bit. All right, um, what should you start a lesson with if you're using the five E's? Okay, go ahead and put a response in the chat. Yeah, I, I did. I did through that. I threw that out there as a as a trick question. Um, hey, we got a lot of people saying engage. We have some people saying uh, we had someone say explain. All right. Um, now uh, I'm going to ask. It's a question, preferably open ended. All right. Thank you, Joshua. All right. I am going to call on Courtney. So, uh, Courtney, uh, could you unmute yourself and explain why you said explain? I said explain because if kids are interested in what you're talking about, they're going to be engaged. Ah, okay, okay, very good. All right, um, Joshua, can you ex uh, can you explain what you uh, what you said here? But you said a question, preferably open ended. Which uh, and what fi what one of the five E's would that fit under? Uh, Go ahead and unmute. <laughs> I, I'm not sure which one of the five E's that falls under. I just, uh, in my experience, starting with an open-ended question uh, leads to engagement and exploration. It will eventually be the, the context for any explanations, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So just as a 
a, a good way to get going. All right. Do you think it could fit under her? Now, this is, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, I would be a horrible, I, I would be a horrible lawyer in a, in a, in a courtroom. Do you think, uh, do you think that this would fit under all of the five E's? I think it could. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a terrible question way to ask a question because it's such a leading question. All right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, totally. It could fit. Uh, Open-endedness could fit within any of the five E's. All right. Um, Pamela said there is a case for Explorer as well. Pamela, would you care to explain that? Well, I think we just <clears throat> had a great opening by John Crippo that said gave a lot of cases of kids exploring first, and then moving into the other E's. Um, that is an engagement tool: is to have kids explore first. Exactly. Okay. So you can have students start with any part of the lesson, really. Okay. So you can have multiple entry points to, uh, to a lesson, right? And that's where you get a lot of that um, individualized learning. Okay. So you can have a student start with, um, you can have students start with a different point in the lesson. All right. Um, you know, you're not just stuck starting always at engage, just like probably when we were, when we first were being, being taught everything is, oh, we started always with the preview, right? And then we, we moved in from there. So we, we have a lot of, there's a lot of flexibility here. Okay. So, um, I'm going to show you here real quick, a template, basic template. Okay. For a hyperdoc. All right a lot of people are in that one right now i'm going to go ahead and give you the link all right this is a very basic hyperdoc and um very basic template all right that i pulled from hyperdocs.co okay hyperdocs.co is the website that um we can get a lot of these templates from all right and you notice here it does start it with explore but and then we go into explain apply all right, now it doesn't use all of the fly, five E's, okay? It kind of goes into explore, explain, apply, and then apply being um, maybe it could be, a, that could be elaborate and extend. There could be a lot of different things here. And uh, our hard basis here is on the left side is where we put in all of our materials, right? We put in all of our materials, um, all, all of our instructions, and then on the right-hand side, we're putting in our, um, our questions, uh, additional instructions, and place where students would then go or where they would post and showcase their learning, okay? So we do have a, we do have a potential for a singular document, but it doesn't have to be a singular document, okay? It can have um, instructions and place for then students to then go to to showcase their learning. All right, or they would post links to go to their learning. And then, um, and these are really easy to be uh, created for yourself because you, if you go to this site um, and you want to get this, uh, you want to get this document, you would just go to file and make a copy. Okay. And then um, you can make it your own. And I'll show you some different examples that people have created for uh, different types of hyperdocs. Okay, so, and we're talking the, the very basic hyperdoc here. We have explore, explain, apply, and I'm going to throw extend in there as well. So, with explore, all right, we want to get uh, something for students to really uh, uh, get into. As Pamela said, all right, student, we have students wanting to, we want to get them engaged. Give them a chance to go look at something and to go out there and see, see, see what something is about, all right, or... Um, to, to, to learn about whatever topic, sometimes whatever topic that they want to learn about, all right? And you can provide links, videos, PDFs, all right? Um, and they can then build background on a topic, okay? Um, when my son comes to me and he says, Dad, I want to learn how to make a birdhouse. I'm like, well, okay. Well, why don't you uh, find out what type of materials you need and let's uh, you go explore that and then come back to me and we'll talk about it and we'll see, we'll see what, what you think you need and then um, we'll go from there. And sometimes he jumps to the end and he's already drawn a plan for it and then we have to go back and talk about, well, what, is the, what, what do you need to be able to, to make that happen? So um, the task usually, which we have the task on the right-hand side, all right? Um, on the task, you give students the questions, expectations, goals, whatever they need, maybe that they need to complete, okay? And that could be something that's fluid that, that goes into the next one, 
okay? And don't think that you always have to follow this order, explore, explain, apply. You can start with explain first, okay? As, um, let's see who said here, uh, explain, okay? Uh, that, was, that was Courtney said explain, and we could start with that first, okay? And then in explain, this is, can be a lesson, all right? Now, if you want to do some teacher-directed instruction here, that could totally be done, all right? It can be done if you're actually in the classroom or if we're set up more for our distance learning model uh, um, or a blended learning or flip learning model. This could be some sort of video or pre-read, some sort of presentation that students are going through. And then um, you can have them taking notes. They can create their own student presentation. Um, they can sketch note. Um, it can be open to how show, students showcase their learning. All right. Uh, and then apply. All right. Going down to apply, we uh, give student instructions on how they're going to then apply. So apply kind of kind of blends into a lot of things here. Okay. We have explore, explain. Well, we then do apply. That kind of that can that can be like like elaborate or whatnot. So it can um, that kind of morphs into uh, quite a few of the different E's. So apply, how do the students apply their learning? Okay, and we give them some, some instructions for that. All right, extend. Um, I apply, I apply uh, put extend in here to a hyperdoc. So we have explore, explain, apply, extend. Um, and I, I tend to always think of this as apply on drugs, right? So this could be like totally open-ended for, for students. And um, that part get, makes it really in, can make it really individualized and allow students to really ha showcase uh, student choice and voice in their learning. All right, so I'm going to ask here, um, are there any questions that we have in, uh, that anybody wants to put in the chat before I move on? Because the next part is going to be, we're going to be able to add some things to our Padlet. No, nope, no questions. All right. Okay, so if you need to get some examples of a hyperdoc, okay. Uh, by the way, you would just go to hyperdocs.co and then you can go to find. All right, and you can go to templates and samples and hyperdocs. I even have one in here too for an old AP German lesson that I did on a, a piece of depressing German poetry. All right. Uh, yes, you can get my PowerPoint. Did you not have the link for it? All right, so I will show an example creative writing challenge here that you can just get to. And all right, I'll, I'll, share the, I'll share the link again to the presentation unless someone else has that wants to share it before I get to it. So we have engage, explore, explain, apply, reflect, share, and extend. So this person had a lot of different examples, but all right, um, this can be an example of the way a, uh, a hyperdoc can be organized. And notice that the coloring is different. There's no one way to do a hyperdoc. So you can make them look really uh, creative because um, if you kept using this, this, this template all the time, it could get a little boring, all right? And uh, having, having a little bit of flair in, our, in the way we wanna create templates is what it's all about. Thank you very much for putting that link in there, Denise. I appreciate that. All right, so you can get your examples right here. All right, and this is also a good place to be able to answer the next question, which is, what do you need to make uh, a hyperdoc? All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our Padlet here. And what are some tools you think you would want to use in a hyperdoc. Think about any and any kind of tool, all right, and it doesn't need to be digital, does not need to, so don't always think we need to be digital. Sometimes the, the best tools are analog, right, are not digital tools, okay? So what are some uh, different types of tools that you would wanna use with a hyperdoc? Um, go ahead and put in some responses in there. All right, I'll give us about uh, 90 seconds to do that. That's a good one. Thank you, Adam. Adobe Spark is rad. Okay. 
Animoto is rad. And I have not used Animoto for a little while, but that is also a great tool. I'm going to come back and have you explain Animoto to everybody. Give us an example of a primary document. Does it need to be digital? Does it, does it, is it in pay, on paper? Where would you find this primary document? Okay, YouTube videos, yes. Okay, Amity said video as well. Okay. An image, yes. You can totally use just an image. And that could be the task is then you go to a Google form to respond. Okay, so your task can be a link that uh, has them go to a Google form. Okay, I'm seeing a couple things with infographics. Okay, a DBQ unit, yes. Sketch noting, totally. That can be um, that could totally be something that someone could explore or use a. You can use a sketch note for students to get into, or that can be their task as well. Okay, and again, sketch notes don't need to be digital, right? They can totally be uh, they can totally be analog because some of our students really really uh, do well if they have a piece of paper and some colored pencils. Okay, thing link yes. All right, we have a lot of different documents to annotate. Very good. All right, and then you can annotate with a lot of different tools. They can, if it's in print, they can annotate it, take a picture of it, submit it. Um, you can use Cami as an extension to be able to do annotation as well. All right, if it's just a Google Doc, well, there's a lot of ways you can do annotation there. Okay, and I've seen a couple things come up with infographic resources. Okay, infographics are a great way to tell a story. Okay, either for a student to create or for us to have in the lesson. Okay, there's a lot that can be said from infographics. Okay, um, and there can be a lot of different, there are also, there can be lessons on what makes a good infographic. Okay, I used to teach uh, AP computer science principles for a while and there was a whole unit on, um, on, on all those types of materials. And we, we looked at how we gather data and examples of like good infographics and then bad infographics. And some of them are so bad that you can't even tell what really it is they're trying to showcase. Um, so Adam, I'm gonna come back to you. Can you explain Animoto and why that might be a good tool to use? Well, um, I actually have gone away from Animoto to Adobe Spark, but um, Animoto and Adobe Spark both do the same thing basically is they allow students to quickly put in images and their ideas and it creates a really powerful digital media production um, that would have taken a long time back in the day with iMovie or anything like that. Now, why did you move away from Animoto to Adobe Spark? Now, I could guess the answer, but um, I, I want you to tell us. Uh, I found that Adobe Spark was easier for students to use and uh, Animoto, you needed an account and the students needed an account. And so it was a little bit more clunky. Mm -hmm. especially for elementary students who technically can't have an account when they're under 13 years of age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to say. Adobe Spark is also free, am I correct? Yes, there's a free version of Animoto as well, but Adobe okay. Spark just really streamlines the process. Yep. And uh, which Adobe Spark do you use the most? Because there are three different ones out there. There's page, video, and post. The video. The video. I think videos are sometimes the most powerful. I, I would agree. Um, I did a lot with post because I love students creating memes and telling a story through a meme. So, but, and yes, I agree. I totally agree with that. There's a lot to be done and a lot of storytelling to be told with a video. All right. Um, you can totally, Denise, you could totally put in a graphing calculator because um, you know what, this would be a way to, as, uh, as a friend of mine says, make math not suck, right? Because traditional math can be can be very very uh, boring. Newzella, yes, totally, which allows annotation too. Amity, that's correct. Um, 
All right, and very good. Let's come back here. All right, so uh, the biggest thing I would say is that you use some, you use links, media, instructions, and then you have a place for your students to share their learning. Okay, so that that could, on the in a traditional hyperdoc, if you use a template, you would use the right hand side to maybe have them place and showcase what they're learning or answer questions or things like that, or they would put in a link to go to a place that would showcase their learning. So if they're doing a Fame link or if they're doing an Adobe Spark or something like that, they would be able to provide a link to go at, to their to their Adobe Spark. All right, and I always put in imagination in here too because um, imagination is is so key for for students. All right, okay, and. Let me go over here. How do we make um, a hyperdoc? Okay, we are not we are not locked into one traditional thing. Now, the easiest way to make a hyperdoc really is um, if you go and get the templates. Is you go to file and you make a copy. Okay, so you're using those pre-made resources already, and that's the easiest way to make a hyperdoc. Okay, so but you are not locked into any one any one format. Okay, uh, the one that we use the most happens to be Google Docs. However, um, a lot more people are using Google Slides as well because what you can do with Google Slides, okay, is, let me go open this up here. You have a Google Slide Deck that has, I love that uh, my, my network is running a little slow this morning and I wonder if someone's watching TV. Slow down my slow down my network. Okay, uh, the nice thing here is each slide focuses on a different part, and um, I like what I can do with Google Slides only because you can. Uh, I think there's a lot more flexibility in adding images and adding flair and making it look really really cool, and uh, you can just put in and switch things up. Okay, so it's not um, centered on one just one document. You have all these different documents within a core document. Okay, so I'm always, I'm a big fan of, of Google Slides for this. Uh, Google Drawings, okay, kind of the, the forgotten, sometimes the forgotten child of the G Suite, uh, of the G Suite um, group of, of apps. Does anybody here use uh, Google Drawings? All right, okay. You like, yeah, is Google Drawings pretty rad? Okay, so I'm going to ask you to unmute a second. What can you do with Google Drawings if um, we have people here who've not used that before? My students use them to do one pagers. So that's awesome. one of the products after a multifaceted lesson or unit. Totally. Okay. Um, uh, Denise, do you use them for creating infographics? Yes, I like uh, the the ability to change the page size to any size you like so they can make a long extended infographic uh, and include links to other things and actually make a hyperdoc out of it. Totally and um, I've been creating infographics for teachers um, in the last few days because we're doing distance learning for summer school as I'm sure everybody else is and uh, helping teachers with um, using different materials so and it is a great easy way to create to create infographics and you can to easily change the format of it um, Google Forms do we have any big Google Forms users anybody want to share how you, maybe you could do a hyperdoc with a Google Form no that's okay all right um, so I'll just say okay, oh. go ahead um, I'll say we've used them as data collection tools, so mm -hmm. a link to a form that goes with whatever assignment they have to go outdoors and and um, look, uh, you know, whatever the assignment is, you can make a, a Google form for data collection and then also as a, ref, a nice reflection tool after completing assignments. Awesome. Now, who is this who is talking? Oh, Amity at Santa Cruz County Office Fed. Amity, thank you very much. And you can um, you can do that and uh, have the form link as part of your standard hyperdoc, or you can use the form as a hyperdoc itself. And each section can be a different part of the the hyperdoc. 
All right. And then students have to answer all the questions in that section before they can move on to the next page, basically. All right. So there's a lot of things that you can do with HyperDocs. All right. Adobe page. Um, we have, I put Sway in here. So if you're not a, a, a Microsoft person, um, uh, Microsoft is Sway is uh, Microsoft's answer to Adobe page. That's, that's basically what it is. When I first learned about Sway, I'm like, oh, Microsoft created Adobe page. Um, and uh, you can use Adobe page. You can do Adobe video and whatnot to do these different sections. Adobe page is like an interactive website, basically. All right. And you can have, as people scroll through different sections, um, it can be different parts of the HyperDoc. And then Google Sites as well. Okay. One of the easiest and uh, uh, most awesome ways to create a website that can be totally interactive is by creating a Google Site. And you can have um, a a page on a Google site that is different HyperDoc lessons. So as you're creating lesson, lessons for a semester or for a unit, you can then put in different pages to um, have different lessons in there. That can actually, you can just, you can just actually take a HyperDoc and insert it right into your uh, Google site and make it really, really easy. All right. Um, any questions so far? Because I'm, uh, I'm trying to be mindful of time because what time does this session end, Amity? It's supposed to be wrapping up in just a couple minutes. Okay, and then so there's it is a 10-minute buffer between sessions. Okay, so it is a 50-minute session. Okay, I want to make sure I am mindful of time. All right, so typically I would try to use this to have some time to build your own, but I have also uh, given you lots of links here, okay, of how to get access to HyperDocs, including examples. All right. Um, most awesome thing here with all the HyperDocs is you just go to, again, file and you can, you can un unmute that. What do we need to do after we click on file? Yes, I saw someone's lips say, make, make a copy. A copy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm usually not good with reading lips, but I, I read them there. Okay. So, yes, file and make a copy. That is one of the best friends that we can have when we are um, working with these templates. All right. And all, and you can use any and all of these. Um, this is a choice board. I will throw that out here as well. So you can have uh, a choice board that is made with um, that is made with lots of uh, different tools, and each part of the table has a different tool. All right, or part of a lesson, and imagine that as as part of a as a different way of doing a hyperdoc. And you can tell students, okay, pick three out of the whole out of the nine. All right. And then that could be a different part of the lesson. You can have explore, explain, apply um, for each column. And you say, okay, pick one from each column. Make your choice. Okay. So uh, I am going to go ahead and wrap up everybody. All right. And I'm going to say this here. Email me anytime or DM me. And as John Carippo says, free lifetime tech support. Okay. Um, I'm glad that he has not trademarked that yet. Okay. Because I want to be able to use that. All right. 